Hello and welcome to the first of our online Bartitsu sessions. Um, I'm aware I'm now talking to an empty room, but I'm hoping more people will be joining us as we go on. Um, so I'm just going to start now and we shall see how this goes. Unlike a lot of productions you're going to see over the next few months and things happening on Facebook, people sharing what they're doing, this is very much just thrown together. This is me trying to give um, a little bit of what we do in our normal weekly sessions for people to have a look at, basically. So it's done with whatever equipment I have lying around my house. And uh, it's done in my front room. Um, it, it's a very low cost production, as you'll see from the poor quality of the camera. But hopefully what we will be able to do is give you an idea of what we do. Um, you can join in a little bit if you want and, and hopefully learn something about Bartitsu. <clears throat> so we're going to start off as we would start every class, which is with falling in. Very old traditional way of doing it, but the way that we would normally start with the fall in, feet together, hands by the side of what we call attention stance. Now, uh, our salute, everybody has a different salute. The idea originally was that two people would square off, they'd both do their salute, and one person might go, ah, I know your salute, your school is better than mine, and I am rubbish, so I shall leave. Um, but actually, in reality, none of that happens. It is entirely just a thing people do at the start and end of class to kind of focus the mind. You bow in, you're in class now. You bow out, you're out of class. So it's just to get that kind of mentality. So from attention stance, both hands come up to the chest, both hands up to the forehead, both hands up to the chest again, we punch out with the off hand, and then step back into whichever guard you prefer. In this case, I think I've gone for a monster right. Okay, and that's all there is to falling in. Um, so from attention, we fall in. Okay, um, we are now officially in class. So um, <clears throat> let's see, a few things I need to tell you about. One of them is I have an earpiece in, which goes to my lovely, beautiful assistant, Michael, who is on the other end of the line here. So if you type stuff, that should kind of make its way through the wonders of technology into my ear. Although we're having a bit of a time lag problem, so how long that will take, we're not sure. But if you want to ask questions, um, if you're not sure of anything, you want to go over anything, stick that in a comment, Michael will pick it up, it comes into my ear, and hopefully I'll be able to come back and revisit stuff as we go through. The other thing is I want to just give you an idea of the scope of what these videos do. Really, if anybody is trying to tell you that um, they can teach you martial arts online, the chances are, hang on a minute. Oh, right, okay, that's just Michael saying hello on this forum. I'll stop reading that because he's meant to be doing that for me. Sorry. So anybody who tells you that, yeah, sorry. <laughs> anybody, <laughs> okay, let's start this whole bit again because you're. I'm confused now. Right, back to it. Anyone telling you they're going to teach you martial arts online, probably lying to you. It's really, really tough to pick up a martial art online. And reality is you're only really going to be able to do it if you already know several other martial arts and you're like, oh, that's kind of like, and I know what's happening. So I'm not going to try and teach you Bartitsu. Okay? What I'm doing is partly this is for my current and existing students. This is a chance to recap some of the stuff you already know gives you a chance to practice, it keeps the little group in the community going, gives us a chance to meet, and a set time to go through all that kind of stuff. For people who have done other martial arts, this is a chance to find out a bit about what we do, and hopefully find out a bit interesting, do a bit of compare and contrast to what it is that they actually practice, you know, on their time scale. Um, for those people who are completely new, um, Hopefully you'll find it interesting. I'm going to tell you a lot about Bartizzi. I'm going to tell you um, a lot about what it is we do in our training practices. Um, and the other thing is that um, you might learn a few moves. But without actually having what you're doing corrected, um, without all the theory and background that goes with it, without actually trying to learn to use it and then using it in a sparring condition, you're not really learning a martial art. Don't go out and rely on anything unless you've actually done that pressure testing and been taught by somebody who's, who's learning. So if you find what I'm doing really interesting, you learn a few of the moves and you really enjoy it, great. Get yourself to a Bartitsu class as soon as the isolation is over. Failing that, get yourself to another martial arts class. There's a lot of really good martial arts out there. I'm happy to speak to anyone who's not sure what martial art they'd like to do, and I will help you find the one that's right for you and then go out and do it, okay? Um, so just with that kind of scope in mind, I didn't want people coming into this with kind of false hopes and false ideas. Um, the other thing to say is safety always comes first. 
and you know you better than I do, okay? So anything I'm doing here should be easily done by someone who is relatively healthy and physical. If you have a dodgy arm, don't start trying to do 100 press-ups, okay? Um, if you've got a dodgy back like I do, then just be aware, you know your own limits. Do what you can do, um, push yourself a little bit, but don't injure yourself, okay? Go at your own level, do your own thing, and if you're unsure about anything, don't do it, come back to it at a later time. Deal with your injuries first, okay? I can't predict what people are gonna have out there, you're gonna have to look after your own safety. Right, so with that said, let's get on to looking at the very first section of our first video, which is going to be looking at a warm-up. It's probably the dullest part of class, it's the bit everybody hates, but it is vitally important. The idea of a warm-up is to <coughs> get your heart rate up, get a bit of stretching in, so that whatever you go on to do after you've done your warm-up, you do safely. Now, I know a lot of people are like, yeah, but if I'm in the middle of the street and somebody comes at me, I'm not going to have time to warm up. That's absolutely right, you're not. And in those circumstances, you might take a pulled muscle, but you don't want to do that every week when you're training, okay? So the reason that you're stretching and you're warming up is to prevent those injuries week on week. The other thing is you tend to train harder than you would fight. I don't. What I mean by that is when you throw a kick in training, you're going to throw it a bit higher than you would do if, where you actually wanted to kick somebody. So the idea is your leg is used to being pushed that bit further, so if it comes to the fight, you can go a bit lower without that, needing that warm-up to save you from injury. So um, it's a vital part of what you do. You've got to do a warm-up at the end. You've also got to do a cool-down at the end. That's going to be the next video. Um, but uh, for this time, I wanted to start off looking at warming up, making sure your body is capable um, of doing it. It also is good um, just in terms of exercise, okay? So there's two parts to it. One part is getting your heart rate up, okay? And you want to start relatively low, build it up, you want to get your heart rate going, you want to get a bit of a sweat on, because what that does is it gets your body ready and used to the exercise before you go on to do anything else. And then the second thing you want to do is stretch everything out. Make sure that none of your muscles are tight, all of those knots from just sitting in front of a computer doing stuff day, you get rid of all of them, so you're kind of loose, your heart rate's going, and you're ready to actually practice. Now, sadly, this is where I find I'm hoisted by my own petard in the fact that I've always said, if you find an instructor who tells you to do exercises without doing them, go and find somebody else to train with. This means if I'm going to talk to you about doing push-ups, I have to do push-ups online with everybody watching. So I apologize that you're going to have to watch me and hear me get out of breath, but hopefully you will understand then that if I can do this, you can do this. Now, I don't mind if you've got a bit of space, you can do it along with me, and um, you can always watch back later, but this is just kind of a basic routine um, for going through for a kind of warm up, okay? So one of the things you do, getting your heart rate up, there's lots of different activities. One of the best you can come to is just running on the spot, okay? Um, it's dull, it's not very exciting, but it is a good way of getting your heart rate going, okay? So we'll start looking at that. So all you're gonna do for starting is you wanna get jogging. You just wanna get a bit of movement so your body's moving. Get the arms involved a little bit. And sadly, if you're a larger gentleman like me, you're going to start to see some things wobbling around. And I'm sorry for that, but you have to live with it. Okay, so from there, you can just speed it up a little bit. God, this feels weird. I'm wearing the wrong trousers so that I've got pockets in, so that I can put my phone in my pocket so I can speak to Michael. And it's really confusing me. Okay, from there, just going to pick it up, go a bit faster and then back down to a nice, slow pace again. Okay, you can do other things. We can pick the knees up at the front. Okay, that's one option. Back to normal again. We can kick the feet out at the front. Okay, back to normal. Gonna turn sideways and you can kick yourself in the ass. Okay, back to jogging. And by now, okay, this is not hard exercise, okay? I'm not puffing and panting, but already my heart rate's starting to go up a bit. We'll take it a bit faster. And slow it down again. Okay, so it's not exactly complicated. Anybody can do it, you can go at your own level. If you can run for 10 minutes at that pace, great. Go faster and do it for five. But 
gives you a waste of time from the rest of your training. But what you can do is just get yourself working, get a bit of a sweat on, get your heart rate moving. That's good. <clears throat> from there, you want to look at some strength building exercises as well. Um, I'm going to look at several of these over the coming videos, but to start with, we're going to look at three today. First one we're going to look at is press ups, okay? Most people are familiar with press ups, okay? Hands either side, this is going to feel really weird doing it standing up <laughs> on the floor, and literally I'm going to push my body away, trying to keep my back as straight as possible, pivoting on my feet. Once you get good at it, there's lots of stuff you can do, okay? If I've got my hand spaced, this is a standard press up. If I move my fingers into the triangle, I'm going to work a lot more of my triceps, okay? Which is important because your body won't let you throw a punch out faster than it'll let it stop it, and that's what the triceps do. So that's a good one to do. If you get really cocky, you can push up and clap. You can push up and then reach right above to get a stretch along your spine as you're doing it, okay? These kind of things here are all different ways of doing press-ups. But as long as you're doing them, you're building those muscles in your arm. So normally I'd look at doing these at about a set of 10 of these, okay? So you're looking at something like this. So just let's go there. Couple of normal, couple of triangles. What else did I say? Couple of stretching round. Oh, what? A couple of claps. Okay. You can do a fair number of different things just to get some of the upper body muscles working. Next one I'm going to look at, squats, okay? So this is building really your legs. So we've looked at arms, the next one is legs. For that, I'm going to put my feet about shoulders width apart. And then without moving my feet, I want to try and put my ass on the floor. So from here, what? Slightly tight trousers. <laughs> I'm going down and I'm pushing, literally trying to sit my ass on the ground. And then back up. And then again, again, if you find this boring or you want more effort, come up, go up to one leg, back down again, next squat, back up, knee up, down. Should sell this, shouldn't I? Fat man does exercise. And down. So those kind of things, building up the legs. The third one I'm going to look at is sit-ups, because that builds up the core which links obviously the upper and lower half together, so it's kind of important. Sit-ups again, there's a lot on this, but normally I would do them with my knees bent, I'll sit up, normally throw in a couple of punches at the top just to give myself a break, and then lie down again. So it looks something like this, starting off lying down, knees bent, from here I'm gonna sit up, throw out a couple of punches, back down again, that'll be one, two, three, if you get bored with this kind of stuff, go down halfway, hold it a second, pull up again. Much harder on the stomach. Yeah? Other options, go the other way. From halfway to half up, back down. Half up, back down. Again, not giving your abs quite the same amount of rest, so you're going to put a lot more effort into what it is you're actually doing. So, so what I would suggest couple of minutes running on the spot. 10 press ups, 10 squats, 10 sit ups. Do that three times. Okay? It's going to take you what? Let's say two minutes each. We're going to six. So it can take about 15 minutes to do three sets of running, three push ups, three sets of dips, three sets of sit ups. You're going to be warmed up by the end of that. <laughs> okay? Um, and again, if you find that dead easy, Aim for 20 rather than 10. If you find that absolutely impossible, start with five, start with two, start with one, okay? And do it for a couple of times, and then try and push for two, and then three, and build yourself up, okay? It's the way any of us get better at anything. So that's your kind of exercise, getting your heart rate up, getting ready to go. Um, the next bit we're gonna look at is the stretching side of things. Now, in terms of stretching, this isn't the kind of stretching where you would do like, um, we're going to look at probably in future weeks again, where I'm actually trying to make the muscles stretch further than normal. This is about loosening up my structure, okay? So you're going to start with the head. We're not going to be using a lot of the head muscles today in terms of what we're looking at later. But if you're doing things like grappling and things, people are going to grab your head and 
wrench it around so it's kind of important you have that kind of loosened off as well so from here standing nice and naturally head goes down to one side you're trying to put your ear on your shoulder the important thing is not to raise your shoulder up to your ear okay that doesn't do any help what i want to do is push my head down so i get that stretch one side of my neck here and then obviously to the other side back up and again about five of these on each side will kind of loosen things up a bit from there forward you can get that stretch along the back rather than just throwing your head back try and push your chin to touch the back of your spine and you'll do this weird thing here but it does a wonderful pull on the back of your head if i move a bit closer and turn sideways my chin's out here i'm trying to push it back so it's touching my spine and you end up doing weird things to your voice but it gives you a really good stretch along those muscles at the back of the neck um once you've done the head we're going to look at the arms so what i would normally start with is just some general arm circles over the top and you are going to get flashed with my stomach and i apologize again one day i'll be skinny and it won't be a problem but i'll also be dead right <laughs> then the other way this is just loosening off all of the shoulders and the arms once you're happy with that bring it in and just do some small ones and this is just rather than the big circuit big motions this is just loosening up some of those smaller fine motor controls it's going to work your triceps so you're going to go forwards and backwards a little bit on there okay so that's your kind of arms and your shoulders loosened out a bit put a slight bend in your knees we're going to go round to one side and then extend the arm round to get a twist along the spine now it's important you don't just bounce off it and come back again because that's really asking a lot of the cartilage and stuff in the back of you back of your back your spine <laughs> so instead push to the point where you can't go any further and then stretch into it a little bit so from here i turn and then i stretch turn to the other side and then i stretch so i'm doing that each side okay so that's me kind of getting my core upper body kind of word from there if you fancy it you can do a bit of hula hooping so that's both feet together and now i'm trying to throw my hips in as big a circle as possible just to really loosen off again all of those muscles around the core especially if we've just done sit-ups and they might have all tightened up and then back the other way i do know somebody who turns this into a wonderful cowboy rodeo kind of uh, uh almost like uh what's the word i'm kind of looking for kind of cabaret performance but uh i'm not going to go that far from there we're going to continue working that kind of same middle section and we're going to bend forward so feet kind of two shoulders width apart rather than just going straight over and trying to touch the floor i want to extend my back as much as possible so we're going to bend until i'm face over and then i'm going to from the base of my spine to my skull slowly stretch each one so i start here and i've just bent my first vertebrae from here the next one and then the next one and then the next one until i'm all the way down to the floor and back up again the second time i go down i can try and go a bit further reach between my legs back up down can try and touch my toes back up stretching out my back i then have to go the other way so i'm stretching back as far as i can sorry about the stomach again and upright and then back again and upright so you're getting that stretch along here as well uh, which is very important if you've got back issues that's a good one to practice from there we're going to open the hips up a little bit so we're just going to bring the hips up and across and that just opens up everything in the legs from there we're going down to the knees we're going to circle the knees much like we did the hips just making sure all of those muscles have moved a bit and back in the other direction okay and then the last one we've got to really look at is our wrists and our ankles not joints that a lot of people think about but they are ones that are vital again for grappling but also when we go on to look at boxing and things you want to make sure your wrists are sorted out otherwise you're going to mess them up really badly so what we tend to do is put one foot forward on the toe hands together and i'm going to circle my hands at the same time as i circle round my my uh, ankle and my wrists at the same time then switch to the other foot and roll my wrists the other way just to confuse you okay once you've done all that i'm not saying it's a perfect warm-up but by that point your heart rate's been a bit elevated you've got a bit of a sweat on you've stretched everything out you're ready now to go into training feeling like you're not actually about to rip something or stretch something or do something awful 
Um, we might look at other um, other exercises in future videos or whatever, but this is just giving you a basic starting point. So that's our kind of warm-up routine. If you want to know more about it, go onto the internet, go to Google, type in warm-up exercises. You'll get like 50 billion YouTube videos with people demonstrating all these things. There's quite a good one. I think it's Black Bell Wiki. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I wrote it down because I'm useful at remembering these things. Um, yes, yeah, blackbellwiki.com warm-up exercises. Um, and they go through and they've got a series of warm-up exercises for different martial arts. Funnily enough, Bartitsu is not one of them. But there's karate on there, taekwondo, jiu-jitsu, all of these kind of things that have the same movements and muscle stretches that are required for what we're doing. So you can go on there, have a look, have a look at what they're suggesting, different warm-up stretches. And really then you've got a whole slew of exercises and stretches. You can find the ones you like. You should do them. They're fun. You should find the ones you hate and do them because they're probably the ones that are doing you the most good. Okay? But the idea is get yourself warmed up. Always do a warm-up before you're training. Right. So that concludes my, my, my first section. And now, because it wouldn't be one of my classes without them, I'm going to go into a section called Duncan Rambles a bit, which is normally what my students do when they're tired, is they'll start me off on the subject and let me ramble about it and eat up time so they don't have to be doing practicing. But what I'm going to do is give you a bit of a background of, about Bartitsu, okay? So Bartitsu started out really with a gentleman called Barton Wright. He was an engineer. Uh, an English engineer who was also a pugilist, so he was a bare knuckle boxer, had studied those kind of things. He went out to Japan. Um, I think rumor says to work on the railways, we're not entirely sure, but he went out to work on engineering projects in Japan um, in the kind of, oh, what, late, oh, my brain's going down, the late uh, 1800s. Thank you. 19th century, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, but, uh, so anyway, so he goes out there. Whilst he's out there, he's privileged enough to be one of the first Westerners who's allowed, to, who gets taught jujitsu. Um, he then brings this back to London with him. More importantly, he brings back two instructors with him um, and starts teaching jujitsu in London. Now I know in this day and age, jujitsu is commonplace. Okay, Brazilian jujitsu, which is a variant of jujitsu, very very common, feeds into all of the mixed martial arts stuff. Everybody knows it. Everybody kind of vaguely knows what it is. In Victorian London, this was new and weird and nobody had seen it, okay? We had kind of Greco-Roman wrestling, catches can wrestling. They look very different to the way that, that, that jiu-jitsu operates. Once you break it down, it's kind of the same. There's only so many ways you can twist a human body to hurt it. But it looked different and felt different and was new. So what Barton Wright was doing was teaching people to box until they got close to their opponent and then breaking out this, this funky secret jiu-jitsu stuff and tying them up, putting them on the floor and ending the fight. And that was really what he taught as his martial art, which was great because he had a secret weapon. Um, however, people start learning your secret weapons and that's what happened. And in fact, nowadays, you can't honestly expect a random thug not to have been to a few MMA classes. So you're not gonna go, ha ha, I know simple trick number three, I can instantly defeat everybody. It's just not that world anymore. So anyway, what Barton Wright did was he started looking around for other people that he could bring in to enhance what he was already teaching. And one of the things he obviously picked up on was he wasn't really using his legs. There's not a lot of kicking that goes on in jiu-jitsu. There's not a lot of kicking that goes on in pugilism either. So he started looking across the water to the French and brought in some savat teachers, um, really focusing on, on savat and an earlier form of that called chasson, which was really all about how to break people using your feet. This is not kickboxing as we think it with nice high flowery kicks. This is guys in hobnail boots breaking each other's kneecaps. So he kind of integrated that in um, and then started looking at, well, what else do you have in a self-defense situation? Well, you have anything you can lay your hands on. So he started doing a lot of improvised weapon. How do I fight with a bar stool? How do I fight with a table? How do I fight with another person? And um, whatever he could get his hands on. Um, and he, a lot of the work he did that with a gentleman called uh, Pierre Vigne, in particular with the walking stick, which has become the kind of archetypal weapon of Bartitsu. 
Um, really, it was just something that every gentleman carried. The Victorians were fascinated with anything they could hold in their hands. Um, you know, fans, um, notepads, gloves were often harried rather than actually worn. But the walking stick, so if it's what gentlemen had, you could teach them to use it to defend themselves. So that's where the walking stick bit comes in. So Barton Wright combined all of these things and created Bartitsu, which was just his name with Itsu on the end of it, because Japanese stuff was really cool and trendy in Victorian London. Um, and indeed, lots of rich people used to come to his um, uh, salon and train with him and would um, uh, uh, pay him lots of money and, and he became relatively wealthy out of it. Didn't go on that way. He was very much into other weird physical culture things like phototherapy and things. Spent a lot of money on As far as we can tell, kind of died a penniless pauper, sadly. But anyway, at his heyday, he had the, uh, the, the Bartitsu School in London. Um, However, um, as things uh, transpired, as they often do, they started having falling outs amongst the instructors, each of them believing their bit was more important or they didn't like the way other people taught things. So they split up, spread up around Europe and started teaching their own individual bits or their own blends of things, normally tacking their own name or whatever onto it rather than Bartitsu and Bartitsu disappears. Um, and really it stays that way for a long time until we pick up with the uh, the fans of Sherlock Holmes. Um, so there's a book, right, okay, Sherlock Holmes has his big fight with Moriarty. If anybody knows anything about Sherlock Holmes, you have this one. The rack and back falls, the two of them come together, this epic fight, and they both disappear off down a waterfall to die. And that was meant to be the end of the Sherlock Holmes books. Nice dramatic ending, job done. But people kept offering him money, so he decided to write some more. So, but then he had to bring well, um, uh, Sherlock Holmes back from the dead, essentially. So what happens is he just turns up, and the next one is the case of the empty house. And he's talking to Watson, and Watson goes, well, how did you escape? And uh, Sherlock Holmes goes, oh, I knew Baritsu. End of conversation, move on, never talked about again. Great plot device, but people start asking, what is this Baritsu thing? Now, after looking at it, it seems either by a misspelling, or misspelling enough not to get done by copyright laws, he was actually referring to Bartitsu. It's something that a Victorian audience who were reading his book would know as this weird esoteric martial art. So great, chalk up his victory to that, move on. So people started digging into what this Bartitsu thing was. There were some articles that Barton Wright wrote for the, uh, the Strand magazine. Um, several of his pupils had written books and things. And there were lots of newspaper articles and people started to piece together this, particularly a guy called Wolf um, in America started piecing together a lot of this and started recreating what was Bartitsu. That was about probably about 20 years ago now and now we've got to the point where we've actually filled out a lot of what was then known about Bartitsu. So we've now got two camps of Bartitsu. We have classical Bartitsu which is Bartitsu as it was taught in Victorian London which is a nice showpiece and it has some interesting stuff in it. You've then got Neo Bartitsu, which is what would Bartitsu look like now if it carried on that principle of trying to amalgamate other things into it. Okay, I mean, it's not a new concept, it's a concept that keeps reappearing over and over the times. You know, mixed martial arts comes from Jeet Kune Do, which comes from, you know, you can trace back these kind of projects as far as you want. But the idea is to taking Bartitsu as its core, what would we add on? What would we change? What would it look different? And that's really what we think of when we're talking about Bartitsu is training that kind of combination of classical and neo Bartitsu um, as a self-defense method and as a bit of a historical curiosity. And that gives you kind of a, a very quick overview of what Bartitsu is. Um, and that was me rambling for a bit. Okay, so what we're gonna look at now is um, really in the kind of second session, I want to cover two things per video. So we've looked at warm-ups. The second thing I want to cover is um, <clears throat> what we call um, our first form. Now, a lot of martial arts use forms. Bartitsu doesn't really have any official forms. Um, forms aren't something I'm a great fan of. Um, they have their uses. Um, right, the idea of a form is to be able to teach people so that you can teach a lot of people at the same time and you teach them by rote repetition to do a set of moves perfectly. 
okay, I've never encountered that problem before. It would be lovely if one day I have 400 people in a room wanting to learn from me, and maybe I'll reconsider at that point. The other thing it allows you to do is take away a sequence of moves to practice on your own. And that, I feel, has more use to us right now. There's a lot of us out there stuck in our houses, and we can't leave and we can't go anywhere, okay? So giving you a set of movements that you can practice and then build on later starts to be a useful process again, in my mind. So that's why I have devised a form. Devised it a while back because I had a student who desperately wanted to do training at home, so I devised it for her to train at home. There are some important things to realize about forms. They're not combat. They're not designed as a sequence of unbeatable moves, okay? <clears throat> I would never expect you to use a form in combat any more than I would expect you to use a press-up as a defensive position, okay? It's a training you do to get you ready to fight, okay? And that's all that is. So don't think that the sequence of moves has anything special in it. They are linked in the way they are to make them easy to go through, easy to remember, and to train the basic movements, okay? But don't build them up into something more mystical than they are. <clears throat> um, so what we look at is our first one. We have four. The first one that we're going to be looking at today, we're going to look at the first half of it, is what we call the power generation, um, form one power generation. And the idea of that is it contains all of the different ways that we generate force to throw an attack. Okay. Now, I know that seems really obvious for some people. You start here and you use your arm and you throw an attack. Okay. That's about the one type of motion we don't use. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some of the different ways that we generate power. Because if you can generate power, you can put those techniques behind any move and generate something that has power behind it. Um, if you want to think about the analogy people use, your fist is a steering wheel, right? It tells the car where to go. Okay. But the power to actually drive the car forward is going to come from my hips and my legs. So when I punch somebody, I punch them with my, my waist and my legs. My hand is just making sure that that force lands in the right place. And um, hopefully that will make more sense as we go through. <clears throat> um, is right. So the question there that I've been asked is, is a form a bit like a combo? Um, Kind of yes and no. Um, a form is, a combo would normally be three or four moves that are linked together that work well together. Um, and those would normally be combat applicable. So for example, quite a common one that I, I've trained in, in numerous different martial arts before would be something like a high block, yeah, followed by a kick, low kick, coming back into a punch. Yeah, so when somebody punches me, I'm gonna block, hit them low, hit them high, back to my guard again. That would be a combo. It's several moves that work well in a fighting situation. If you want to go for boxing, jab, jab, cross, yeah? Jab, hook, duck under, hook. Those would all be combinations. They work in a fighting context. A form is purely a devised way of stringing techniques together so that you can remember them and train them. Um, so it, it's much more like a, a kata, um, forms, um, I'm trying to think, uh, sets, they're called different things in different martial arts, but they're essentially a way of remembering the moves, but they're not designed to be used in combat. You'd rather unlock it, take one particular move out of a form and use that, rather than actually using the form or part of the form in its entirety. Hopefully that answers the question. If not, ask more and I'll try and explain. <laughs> so, um, to start with, we're looking at power generation. And the first thing we're gonna look at, is, I'll tell you what, I'll start off by giving you an idea of what this first bit of the form looks like that we're gonna look at. So what we're gonna do is we start, hopefully I'm still on screen, as always, we start with a bow at the start of the form and into our guard. We're gonna use our Bartitsu guard here, but I'll come back to that in a minute. So from here, the form is gonna look really weird. So I'm gonna start here, here, here. I'm slightly worried I'm gonna kick the TV at the end of this. <laughs> Um, I am, from there, I'm gonna jump backwards to do the kick, okay? So it's not a complicated bit that we're gonna be looking at today. So again, that's all we're gonna look at today. There's not a lot in there. It's not designed in some way to be greatly offensive. 
Well, what we're going to do is break it down each individual bit and put it together. So we start with our Bartitsu guard, and I'm going to turn sideways for this. My foot points at my opponent, my other foot back, about a shoulder width, out about half a shoulder width, turned at 45 degrees so I can sit comfortably into that position. My lead hand level with my nose. Imagine a line between your nose and your opponent, and your fist wants to be on it with your arm almost straight. The other one curls up on that same line about halfway. And that gives me my defensive guard that we're going to use and bring most of our stuff from. So from here, our first move is to deliver a punch. Now, we're going to deliver that just by straightening the hand out. And we're going to hit knuckles straight up and down. We're not doing karate or something where we turn it over and end up with a floppy wrist. Up and down, nice and strong. So from here, we're just going to straighten the arm out. Okay, that's my steering. All I'm doing is locking so that the force generated here will transfer through my body. The power comes from what I'm doing with my feet. This movement, what we call the drop step. I'm gonna, rather than lowering my body down, I lift my foot and let gravity take over, yeah? Gravity wants to pull me down. So if I take away that prop, my body falls. So the idea is I want to straighten my hand so it lands a fraction of a second before my foot does. That means not only do I hit with the little bit of my strength of arm I have here, I also hit with my body weight and a bit of gravity added on top. Okay? So for someone who's a bit bigger like me, being able to add my body weight to a punch makes it a lot more effective. So I can go from a little tap to quite a solid punch that's going to land and do some damage. So that, that's our first move straight with a drop step, okay? So after we've done our bow to my guard, that was step one. Step two, after our straight, is a cross. So from there, I'm going to bring this hand and throw it down that same line. Now, all of these are following a center line, trying to hit my opponent in the nose. If I can break my opponent's nose, their eyes start watering, blood starts flowing, they're disorientated, and I can do whatever else I want to them. Okay, so step one, break the nose pretty much all the time with Bartitsu. Or the knee, but we'll come to that later. So for now, there's my drop step. I'm going to twist and throw that one down the same line. Now I've got more extension of my arm, but the power actually comes from my hip. Again, that's just straightening it to form a transmission, a solid barrier, that, a sort of line so that the force can move down. Throwing my hip from here forward, so I'm from here, I'm trying to throw it at this wall across here. That's what's going to generate my power. So from here, drop step, throw my hip forward, and the hip drives that power in. Okay? And those are our two basic punches, okay? You can quite happily drop step, recover, drop step. Oh, there it is. Bang. In with a solid punch to finish it off. Okay? So there's your first two moves. Drop step, cross. The next one we're going to look at is a... Is, is an uppercut. So there's one, two. The third one, we're going to bring this backhand up really in close. Now, the idea of this one is where the first two for the nose, this one is trying to normally land in the throat. Solar plexus, stomach, throat, nose, but moving upwards. Don't want the point of the chin. If I hit the point of the chin with my fist, I break my fist. So, <laughs> probably that chin too, but I want to come out of this okay. So from here, I'm going to step forward a little so that I can have this neg, leg bent and kind of coiled like a spring, so that when I bring my uppercut in, I am straightening that leg to provide the power. The punch is not the swing of this arm. The punch is the straightening of that leg. So drop step, cross, here. And that's my uppercut. Okay? So those are my first three movements. That making sense to everybody? You can shout if not. Now would be a good time. So, drop step, cross, uppercut. From here, we're going to reset to guard and come in with the first of our non-punching moves, which is a chasse fouetti med, which is a roundhouse kick on the midline. So what I'm doing here is, there are several different kicks that we can do. They're all called chasse. We switch to French because Sabat is French. So chasse means kick. Fouetti is that kind of round kick. So rather than a... Uh, a frontal, which would be a front kick, or a side kick, which would be a 
lateral, we're looking at a fuetti. So from here, it's coming from the back leg, it's coming round and moving directly across. For those of you who play football or something, it's like a lob, um, you know, where the ball's bouncing and you're kind of kicking it sideways. So ideally, and I want to do this, and I'm not sure I can in these trousers, essentially, I want to be coming across at uh, 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 that kind of waist height. So from here, across and down. So from here. So ideally, that kick is not going to be landing where all this padding is. If I'm actually doing this kick for real, it's either going to hit the inside of my, the inside of the, um, what am I looking for? The ankle to try and make that foot kick out. It's going to hit the inside of the knee to bend and destroy stance, or it's going to hit between the legs to try and make me kind of um, because again, if I'm incapacitated, I'm a much easier target. But as I said at the beginning, we practice higher than we'd actually want to use it. If I can comfortably kick somebody in the stomach, then I know under duress, I can quite happily kick them in the nest, which is where I'm actually going to be aiming for. So drop, step and punch, cross, uppercut, fuetti. And now I'm facing the other way than I was to start with. And I'm just going to do those three punches again, but on the other side. So, drop step, cross, uppercut, fuetti, drop step, cross, uppercut. Okay? I'm not going to go over those again, because we've already been over them. If you want to see them, rewind this about 10 minutes and watch it again. <laughs> okay? You're just doing it with the other foot forward. The reason for that is I want, in a fight, to quite comfortably be able to fight from either foot. And that means I need to practice being able to do all of my moves from both sides. So, drop step, cross, uppercut, fuetti, drop step, cross, uppercut. Okay, so we've only got about three more moves left and we've done half the form. As I said, it's not a long one, but there's a lot in here. The next move we're gonna look at is called a coup de pied, a coup de pied bed, a coup de pied, uh, coup de pied bed. I've lost it entirely. Oh. <laughs> yes, a coup de pied bed, which is a sweeping hit with the foot on a low line. Uh, yeah, so coup, sweep, de pied with the foot. Bass is the low line as opposed to med, which was the medium line we talked about earlier. Sorry, my French and all other languages are atrocious, and I apologize, but I'm trying. Okay, so from here, what I'm doing this time is I'm again attacking with the back leg, but this time I'm bringing it, rather than round in a kick, I'm going to bring it up and straight through. So from here, I lift the foot and kick through. So rather than changing my hips and kind of stepping forward, my hips stay in the same orientation. I just lift the foot and kick through. Now, the idea of this is I'm coming up and then I'm going to stamp down on the kneecap. And I have three options. I can stand on the top of the kneecap, push it down so the kneecap ends up in the middle of the shin. I can kick up, take the kneecap up into the middle of the thigh, or I can just go through and try and crumple the kneecap entirely. All of these will basically leave people unable to walk for a time, possibly permanently. Okay, so be careful if you're practicing this on other people, you don't actually want to break people's legs. But from here, could have pay back, boom, through in the leg. Nice, quick, standard kick. Works very well, because you can be up here being very, very peaceful. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to fight, I don't want to fight. Break the kneecap, okay? And there's probably a bar top here in the CTV camera can't see it. No, I didn't say that, scrap that bit, no. <laughs> No actual violence in those terms. But that's the kick. It's from here. I can be boxing whatever quick little kick into either the kneecap or the shin. And there's nothing to stop me hitting the knee and then doing what's called purring, which is running the instep of my shoe down the front of the shin. Incredibly painful. Not going to do any major damage, but that pain will distract people and allow you to do other horrible things to them. So that's the next bit <coughs> after we've done our fuetti. Drop step, cross, uppercut. We get that coup de pied bar coming through. The next move we're going to do is a uh, chasse frontal. 
So from here, it's just a kick with that front leg. And all I'm going to do is raise my knee and flick it out, up, flick it out, back down again. And I'm trying to hit with what essentially my shoelace is. Predominantly, this tack is going to go between my opponent's legs. This is a very quick shot, and most of the time I'm going to hit the stomach and cause a little bit of distraction, or I'm going to hit the nads and cause a lot of distraction. But all I'm doing is foot comes up, kick, back down again. The important thing to realize about kicking is something called the chamber. When I kick, I don't just raise my leg up like this. My knee comes up first and then my foot kicks up. That knee coming up here is the chamber and it's vital. You cannot kick higher than your chamber is. If your chamber is here, I can only kick low. If my chamber is here, I can kick high. But I have to get the chamber up in order to deliver the kick. Now, to make things a little bit more complicated, and because I believe everybody should be working on balance and a little bit more muscle control as we go, we don't just do a coup de pay bar, recover back, chasse frontal. Okay, if you're just starting out, that's totally where you're going to start with. Okay, so you're going to do your fouetti, drop step, cross, uppercut, coup de pay bar, frontal. Okay, if, that, if, if, if you are starting out with all of this, that's the moves to start with. However, if you're a bit more accomplished, which is where I'm hoping some of you will begin to, I'm going to do it this way. So if I've done that fouetti to here, <clears throat> my drop step, my cross, my uppercut, my coup de pe bas comes through, and then I jump from there into my kick. Okay? So I'm not resetting. Rather than kick, back, kick, I'm going to go kick, kick, and back down again. Again, I would never expect you to use that in a fight. Don't have both feet off the floor. It's a really bad idea. Because the minute you have no feet on the floor, you have no control. Somebody grabs you midway through. You can't change. You can't move to a different line. All you can do is, is live with it. But in terms of learning a bit of balance, learning a bit of control, building a bit of explosive power, all of those are good things. So that's in the form, which harks back to what I was saying. The form isn't combat, the form is teaching. Okay, so linking all of that together. Whew. We start with a bow, which I keep forgetting. Drop step, cross, uppercut, fouetti. Drop step, cross, uppercut, coup de pay bar, chasse frontal. I'm not doing these as full kicks because I only have between the sofa and my TV. <laughs> and if I break the TV, my wife breaks me. So let's not go down that route. So if I start here, I'm gonna do it back in the other direction. Drop step, cross, uppercut, fouetti. Drop step, cross, uppercut, cut up bar, chasse frontal. Okay, and we've just got one more move to add on the end of that which I learned originally from Kung Fu, which was called a, a Pak Sao. And essentially what it's doing is from here, after I've done, oh, where have I done that kick through here and I've landed uh, in this way round, I want to turn round to then go the opposite direction. When I'm turning, I don't want to just go, ha, huh, because if somebody's throwing a punch as I'm turning into it, I'm adding momentum into their punch. So I want to protect this side as I'm turning. So what I'm going to do is take the arm closest to the direction I'm turning, goes down my leg. Okay, that's covering my kidneys, all of that kind of horrible vital stuff here I don't want to hit. The other hand comes up by my face. <clears throat> so from here, that's my pack out. I'm covered from head to kind of mid-thigh. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. So what I'm going to do is as I've landed, I'm going to turn to a pack sail, and I'm going to turn that way. So if anything is coming, I'm taking it on my hands and my arm, not my head. And from there, I can go back to guard. And that's really it. That's the first half of the power generating form. So drop step. There's my power generation. Hip twist. Power generation. Cold spring. Uppercut. Power generation. Swinging of the hips. Power generation. Then we're doing it all again on the other side. Power generation, I rise, I fall for my power generation. I jump, more power generation. 
a twist. Again, coming from the hips. It's all about teaching you how to generate force. And that's really how, that, that's really kind of the first form, uh, the first half of the first form. Um, which is kind of where I want to kind of wrap that up to some extent. <coughs> what have I got left for my list here? Cool, right. So what I wanted to do, we've got about 10 minutes left, maybe something along those lines. What I want to do is give you a bit of homework if you want to follow along with this week on week. First bit of homework, do some warm-ups. Um, do the one I said, a bit of running, push-ups, squats, uh, sit-ups, set of three. Do that three times before next week, okay? Just so that you get used to getting your heart rate up and you get used to stretch again. The other thing that I'll do, if you're locked in and you're not getting out very much, that is three lots of 15 minutes exercise and that's better than nothing. So get that in, you'll feel better for it. Okay, so that's homework piece number one if you want to follow along. Homework piece number two, practice that form. Okay, this video is going to stay on Facebook. You can go back and look at it whenever you want. You can practice those moves. Once you're pretty happy with those moves, try doing it as fast as you can. Then try doing it with as much power as you can. Okay, then try doing it just the footwork. Then try doing it with just the hands. Okay, you can play around with it until you know it inside and out. Okay, mostly because every time you're throwing a punch and you're doing a drop step, your body is learning muscle memory. And the only way you're going to get better at it is if you do it over and over again. So that's homework piece number two. Right. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, <clears throat> right. So the other things that we're going to look at is um, next time, if you feel you've not had enough and you come back next week and want to see more, we're going to be looking at the second half of that form. So I'm going to show you the other half and what that actually looks like. Um, again, it continues to look at different ways of generating power. Not a huge shock there, but I'll show you that. The other thing I'll talk about next time is cool downs. And that's what you do at the other end after you've done training. It's just taking your heart rate down again and stretching out a bit more. It's what I'm going to do once I finish this and log off. Okay, But next time we'll cover it in much more detail. So that's going to be next time will be part two of the form and a cool down. If you want to come back to the, have a look at that. Um, other than that, uh, we shall, at this point, um, normally at this point, I would open up 20 questions. Um, so really, if anybody does have any questions, now is a good time to, to throw those in. But I don't get anything in the next couple of minutes after I keep talking. We'll call it there, and we'll have a full up. Yeah, so we'll, as I said, it's entirely up to you if you have questions. There's nothing to stop you if you have questions later on when you're watching another time, contact me. I will talk about this stuff all day, every day. So <laughs> message me. I will happily answer your questions. Put it in the comments of here. I'll answer your comments here, okay? As I said, I am very much a hobbyist, okay? This I do as a hobby. I don't make any money out of teaching or, or researching or training. Um, I'm not trying to tell you how to be great martial artists. What I'm trying to do is get you interested and in doing something, okay? So I am all of the keen. Ask me the questions <laughs> if you want. Um, but, um, so as I said, you can do that at any time. So other than that, that's kind of where we will wrap things up today. The next session, as I said, will be 7 o'clock next Tuesday. And ideally, we will keep doing that until we're allowed to go back out in the streets. And I can go back to my nice upstairs of a bar uh, uh, in the lovely kind of, uh, uh, well, I suppose, 1920s Prohibition bar, Prohibition cabaret bar. Um, and I will be doing my training there as normal. Um, so that is kind of the idea. So for now, what I'm going to do is, as we do at the end, we started with falling in, we finished with falling out. So again, we go from attention, and it's exactly the same. The only difference is after we punch, we go back to attention stance. We're not training, getting ready to fight. We finished, we go back to attention, and we leave. So thank you all very much for coming along. And then we will fall out. So. so, thank you very much. If anybody has any feedback, ways we can make this better, things you want to cover, things you hated, drop it all in feedback in the forums, um, on, on the comments. I'm going to go through them all. I'm going to have a look at them all. And we're going to try and make this better as we go along. Um, but other than that, thank you very much for your time. Um, stay safe. Be kind. 
and I'll see you all next time.